Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see all of you this morning. Uh, my name is Ralph Honda, and I am the chairperson for today's uh, service. We will be, uh, in addition to our uh, meeting today, um, I'd like to welcome those who are live streaming the uh, service on our Temple's YouTube uh, channel. So welcome to today's uh, family service and monthly Shotsky Hoyo. Uh, our monthly Shotsky Hoyo is to honor those uh, loved ones who passed away during the month of June. And um, so uh, that will be our, uh, in honor of them for this, this month. Uh, thank you to Breben Honda for uh, ringing the concho or the calling bell, signaling the beginning of today's service. And I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Laverne Imodi and Reverend Nodiko Kawai for leading us for today's gathering. Okay, uh, we will we will begin this morning service with the um, chanting of the sutra Juse Ge, and that can be found on page thirty five of the service book. Oh, 
Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention to uh, thank all of you for following our temple's uh, protocols for today of wearing your masks in, so in the service. We will not ha be having any incense burning, but uh, gosh, show. At, at this time, uh, I'd like to uh, have Reverend Laverne read the uh, Shotsky names for the month of June. And those of you that have family members, um, please uh, feel free to come up. We are not burning incense, so we will not be doing Oshoko, but uh, you can come up and do uh, Gashio. I'd like to start by offering our very sincere condolences to the family and to the friends of Moto Tsuneyoshi, who died May 8th, 2022. I will read the name of the deceased, um, the person who died during the month of June, and then the family member. Mika Sato, Takashima family. Masami Ito, Ito family. Nobu Nobuko Ito, Ito family. Akito Matsui, Imori and Curtis families. Mina Taro Hosaka, Hosaka family. Hajime Yonekura, Yonekura family. Toichi Kodama, Kodama family. Isano Sugioka, Sugioka family. Goichiro Haseyama, Noboru Haseyama. Hideo Iwata, Iwata family. Matsue Morita, Morita family. Shigeyuki Furuya, Furuya family. Shizu Moriyama, Moriyama family. Yukino Sameshima, Takeshi Sameshima. Shojiro Sameshima, Takeshi Sameshima. Jukichi Yamanishi, Miyoko Yamanishi. Rokuichi Hanano, Gerald Hanano. Yozo Kawato, Nancy Nakatani. Toshiko Yamada, Yamada family. Shigeo Fujimoto, Fujimoto family. Tsune Tsubota, Isami Tsubota. Kikuyo Kawasaki, Ohara family. Toichi Okamura, Mitsuo, Mitsuo Tsurudome. 
ギタロハタウエ、イノウエファミリー、ミドリ、モリモト、モリモトファミリー、ユカ、ヤマノクチ、オツジファミリー、タモツオジリ、ダグオジリ、ユル、シライシ、シライシファミリー、キヨジオトモ、チヨコワタナベ、クニシマダ、シャランシマダ、ウチ、うちじおうち、やなぎはらファミリー、たもつまつもと、トロイまつもと、せいちしみず、ゴーデンしみず、フランク、やまだ、やまだファミリー、リチャード、しずおわたなべ、ダイアン、やまだ、エミ、フジモト、フジモトファミリー、キヨシ、シンサト、ミチコ、シンサト、フミコ・シロナカ、ハワード・シロナカ、サンドラ・サチコ・タカシマ、ロナルド・タカシマ、ナオヤ・ヤグラ、ヤグラファミリー、ジョージ・ヤノ、アイリーン・バグナー、エイジロ・ヤマシタ、ミルドレッド・カワサキ、ジェイ・リチャード・ティーグ、ティーグファミリー、チエコ・キダ、キダファミリー、ロニー・イシサキ、ロレラ・イシサキ、タム・マサカツ・ヨネクラ、ヨネクラファミリー、トシコ・モリ、タケコ・デイヴィス、マキコ・イシズ、セツコ・トヤマ、サダエ・コハラ、サヨ・フジワラ、ミズエ・カポル、ヒマカファミリー、ミヨシ・タナカ、ヨコ・オガ・オザワ、ミノル・ナカムラ、Nakamura family, Masako Lawrence, Alexander Lawrence, Tokyo Hayashi, Kiku, Kikue Hayashi, Shigeharu, Shigeharu Nakamura, Wendy Nakamura, Ronald Iguchi, Iguchi family, George Shuichi Tsubakihara, Ken Tsubakihara, Haru Girard, Roxanne Girard, Tomio Nakano, Nakano family. George Hiroshi Masumoto, Chiyoko Masumoto. Bob Nobu, Nobuo Ito, Suzanne Ito. James Kida, Katsumi Kida. Thank you, Reverend Laverne, for、uh, reading the names,、uh, Shotsky names, of、uh, loved ones who passed away during the month of June. So many、uh, names of family members who are associated with our temple,、um, who,、uh, ma ma many of whom、um, were、uh, very active members of the temple at one time and uh, helped.、Um, Um, form the、uh, temple th uh, of how、uh, we are able to、uh, appreciate、um, today. So, thank you. At this time,、um, will everyone please rise for the、uh, recitation of the three treasures? And that can be found on page 91 of the service book, and that will be. Led by、uh, Avis Honda. Okay, put your hands together, please. Hard is it to be born into human life? Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not deliver ourselves in the present life, no hope is there that we shall be freed from suffering and sorrow in the ocean of birth and death. 
Let us fervently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of your way into enlightenment and awaken ourselves in our supreme will. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become unit in true accord in your life of harmony, in a spirit of universal brotherhood, free from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriads of kappas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namadabatsu. 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 Thank you, Avis. You may be seated. At this time, um, Reverend Laverne has a message she'd like to share with the, for the Dharma School stu students. I think there there are some students here today. Yeah, so, a few. Yeah, you thank you. Them to come up? Would you like to come up to sit in the first row? If you want to see the pictures, you have to come up. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to read a story. First of all, um, just want to apologize for my uh, tardiness. This is one of those uh, rough meetings for the So I'm going to read a story, and I find that um, the Dharma, Sakamuni um, Buddha, shared the Dharma. So I love I love children's books. I think I should have been a children's librarian, maybe. But um, there are a lot, I think there's a lot of books out there that um, share a really good dynamic. So I'm going to talk today. What is today? I know you guys know what today is. Can I say it together? Yes, today is Sunday. What is it? Is there a special service? Thank you. 
San Diego Zoo on the door. Every morning, when he took a shoe spot, he just crawled out of his cage and spent his day with Ida. Ida was always right there. Always. When he touched the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when he touched the water, Ida, Ida was there to splash the water. He takes the race and took the food of the water. So this is in the morning, right? Gus throwing the ball, and here's Ida catching it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. And this is them splashing at each other. Yep. And this is when they're stopping in the evening. Do our polar bears at our zoo play? Have you guys watched them play around in the water? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. I love going to the polar bears, except I like to catch the tram because it's a long walk up. Then the two friends flopped onto their favorite rock while the city pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it to feel it, said Ida. Listen, listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo, people saying, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laughing. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us always. So here's the pictures of the city. And so they couldn't really see all the activity in the city, but they could hear the sounds of the city, right? When the sky grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off to their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sounds of their city. Each day was always the same. Do you snore when you go to sleep? You don't? Does your dad snore? Sometimes. Sometimes. Does your mom snore? My dad snores. <laughs> I snore. <laughs> um, until one morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out. So here it's nighttime, right? And here is Gus crawling out of the city, out of his cave. But. Ida wasn't there. Gus lumbered to Ida's cave. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels squabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled about. Ida had never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxi cabs screeched. Ice cream trucks jingled. Still, Ida didn't come. And so here's Gus, right? He's coming out of his cave. And he's waiting for Ida in the sunshine. He's waiting and waiting and waiting. But Ida hasn't come out. You think something was wrong? Yeah? Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to swim and play. Then one day, when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides churned. His chin shook. The sky rumbled. Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go. Don't go. Don't. Ida growled right back. Together, they stomped and snarled. Their growls turned into Howl so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than the skyscrapers, scaring pigeons, surging towards stars. So what do you think the growling meant? Were they angry at each other, do you think? Maybe that's the way polar bears showed that they're kind of sad and they're upset with, the, with that news, that Ida was very, very sick. And then they stopped, two friends folded into one, in, into one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bear noses sniffled, two bear breaths panted, two bear breaths echoed each other's beat. So they were feeling pretty sad. 
plane roared overhead, Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going, too. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. That made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling, too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. So here they are, sitting together, just being together, right? And here they are, sniffling but giggling too. From then on, Ida spent most of her days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her, and Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitors' notes too. So I think the visitors knew that Ida was sick, and so they wrote notes to her, and Gus would take them over to her. There were growling days and laughing days and days that mixed them up. So they spent a lot of their days together, being with each other, doing the things that they enjoyed. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone, and sometimes Gus did too. But at the end of each day, Gus always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clicked on. They would wave goodnight a thousand times, and then wave a few more times. Then one sunny day, when, while Gus smoothed her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut, and they didn't open anymore. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. The paper showed the news. The city cried. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. Now, when the keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his cave, knowing Ida won't be there. He dives and swims alone, and he eats his lunch with his keeper, Sonia. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. Some days, Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rock in her cave behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadow. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo, people saying, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laughing. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. He listens to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. The sidewalk taps, the sidewalks tap and the streets hum. Gus's heart beats and Ida is right there with him, always, because she's with him in his heart. So, the reason that I shared this story is not to make you sad, although you may feel a little sad. When I read the story, I felt a little sad. But it's to remind us the importance of a service like today. It's to remind us of why we do Shotsky. You know, some of you may think, well, I don't know these people. And our minister is reading the names of these people. I don't know. You know, I'd rather be back in bed. But I want to stress to you the importance of remembering and not forgetting. It's like we had, I think, um, Mr. Ralph, I think you wrote an article. Is that article in the paper now? Not yet. So it's the reason that we go to Memorial Day services and do Memorial Day services. It's to remember that the reason that we're here today is because of all of those people and what they did for us, even though we didn't know them. A lot of people built this temple. We didn't know them. But if we think about it, let's say thank you, right? Just like Kenji Sensei used to say, we go from please to thank you. And we keep that thank you in our hearts on days like this, okay? So please join me in Gashio, and we will say Nembutsu Namo Amida.
as with gratitude in our heart. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you guys for coming up. Thank you very much, Reverend Laverne, for your very heartfelt message in the story um, for the Dharma School. I think this is a reminder, even for Dharma School children, that you know not only you have you know um, loved ones who have passed away, but you know you also have pets too, and pets have a life, a life just like you. And at, and at some point, you may lose a pet, whether it's a dog or a cat, or even if it's a bunny rabbit or a goldfish. You know, they all have lives, and they all, and your pets always have um, meant something to you and your family in your life. So thank you. Next, we will have the reading of our pledge. And the our pledge is written by the Gomonshu of our Jodo Shinshu tradition, uh, Reverend uh, Otani Kojun. And uh, the, there's a handout in the back of the service book that you can use to read. And to lead the reading of our pledge will be um, Andrea and Paulina Cova Rubius. Our pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I will share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. It's open. I will share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life I have received, I shall strive to live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who tirelessly works to liberate all. Gasho, Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you, Andrea and Paulina, for leading us in the recitation of our pledge. At this time, I have a few announcements to make. Uh, next Friday, on June 17th, will be our temple's uh, virtual community fundraiser with um, Panda Express restaurant. Yay? You like Panda Express, Jaden? Well, okay. Well, make sure that your mom and dad get you something. So on that day, all day, all day Friday, from when the when the stores open until evening, we'll be having this fundraiser, and it's at any location in San Diego County. Um, the one catch is that you need to order online, and uh, there's a uh, uh, there, there's a, a link on the uh, temple's website that you can click on for the, for the event. Uh, and you must order using the uh, special code, order code, which is 908377, that is specific to the Buddhist Temple of San Diego. Um, you can, 28% uh, of the sales, of the net sales will uh, be donated to the temple. So you share this with your uh, family, friends, your neighbors. Um, you can s share it with uh, family members anywhere across the country to help support the temple with this fundraiser um, that will be on June 17th. There are flyers in the back of the Honda also if you'd like to pick one up. Next Sunday, the 19th, the temple will be having its annual picnic at Roar Park in Chula Vista, starting at 10 a.m. 
I know uh, for Dharma school students, a picnic is a fun event, but it's uh, everyone is invited, Sangha is invited to, to the uh, service and picnic. The service begins at 10 o'clock. The junior YBA will provide games for the Dharma school students, and um, there'll be a barbecue lunch for everyone. If you lo would like to bring some a side dish for the uh, luncheon, you you're welcome to do so. Uh, Roar Park is located in Chula Vista. Uh, sorry, we don't have maps available, but uh, it's um, it's on the. Uh, um, right between uh, Chula Vista and Bonita. Oh, thank you to, for all those who uh, participated in the uh, bazaar last weekend. It was a big success, and um, we thank those of you, all of you who um, helped out and volunteered your time for the few days to make it a successful event. And, um, uh, Hope everybody got some food. You know, we ended up selling out of everything, so that was very nice. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yes. Following the service today, uh, Reverend Nodiko will, um, will give a Dharma message in Japanese. So those of you who'd like to stay for the Japanese message are welcome to do so. And then our... Um, Next in-person service, uh, hybrid service, will be on Sunday, July 17th. And that will be a family service along with the observance of the July and August Shotsky. Our Obon and Hatsubon service will be held on Sunday, July 31st from uh, 2 o'clock p.m. And uh, Reverend uh, Gregory Gibbs, our supervising minister from the Pasadena Buddhist Temple, will um, officiate that service. And following the service, we will have our Bon Odori in the parking lot. So everyone, please join us for the Obon Hat Hatsubon service and the Odori following. And then... Um, uh, to, to get ready for Bon Odori, uh, practices will begin on uh, July 6th. And practice will be held on Wednesdays leading up to Bon Odori to the 31st on, July, on Wednesdays at 7 and on Sundays with the exception of July 10th uh, starting at 11 a.m. And... Uh, all other information that is shared will be in our um, July Busse script, will prop, which will come out at the end of this month. Okay, I guess uh, at this time I'd like to excuse the Dharma School students. Uh, there's a craft activity um, that will be held downstairs, led by uh, Miss Jamie and uh, Mr. Greg and Miss Nancy. So if you could come up and Gosh show before going downstairs. Thank you very much. Well, as the uh, Dharma School uh, um, offers uh, gosh show offering and uh, leaves, I'd just like to mention that. Uh, Following today's service, there will be hospitality. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure where it will be. There, it will either be downstairs in the uh, dining room or uh, possibly out on the terrace. Okay, at this time, the, uh, we will continue with the service with a, a recitation of the Vandana and Tisarana led by Reverend Laverne, and that can be found on page 96 of the service book. Please join me from the beginning. Namo tasa bhagavat ato arahato 
Sammasambuddhasa. Homage to him, the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one. Udam Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Namo Kie Butsu Namo Kie Ho -o. Namo Kie So -o. I go to the Buddha for guidance I go to the Dharma for guidance I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namo Midabuts, Namo Midabuts, Namo Midabuts, Namo Midabuts, Namo Midabuts. Thank you. At this time, Reverend Byrne will share her Dharma message to the adults. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Midabuts, Namo Midabuts. I want to start off today by thanking you all for coming. I know it's um, COVID. Somebody told me COVID wants to survive, but COVID is changing. And um, uh, we have a variant right now that seems to be pretty contagious. In this past week, I have actually people that I've worked with, um, I've discovered, have come down with COVID. Um, there were three of them. Um, we don't think it was at the event that I was at. I was in um, College Park, Maryland this past weekend. Lots and lots of kids. There were about uh, 800 people there. Uh, most were masked, and we all had to do daily COVID tests. But I think any time that we get together, I think this is going to be here with us for a while, um, like the flu has been. So please, uh, so thank you, first of all, for wearing your masks. I'm taking mine down so I can speak a little bit more clearly. But thank you for wearing your masks and taking precautions. And thank you for coming today. Um, and those of you that are live streaming in uh, on Zoom, thank you. I know that you are um, taking your own precautions by staying at home. Some of you um, may have been a little uncomfortable as I was reading the book. It's a children's book. It's a children's book about death. But I feel that it's really important to not be silent on the topic. I think this is something that we as Jodo Shinshu Buddhists, um, we, we do uh, funerals, we do memorial services. We, uh, part of our tradition is that memorial services are pretty important, and our monthly Shotsuki service is very important. It's the time when we can read the names of those folks who, because of their efforts, we are here. And as I told the children, we don't know these folks, we don't know these people, but they built this temple. Many of them built this temple. Maybe not all of them, but many of them did. And many of them worked to support this temple. Um, someone recently asked me, I did a funeral for a family, and they had a granddaughter who was 10 years old, and the grandmother, it was the grandfather that had passed away. The grandmother asked me, do you think it's okay? Do you think it's okay for my granddaughter to uh, view her grandfather, her deceased grandfather, um, and then come to the, to the funeral service? It was just a small family affair. 
My response to her was, you know, she and uh, the child's parents were the best to answer the question because I did not know the child. I, I met her for the first time at her grandfather's service. Um, and so that they should use their wisdom uh, to make that decision as to whether to bring the child to the viewing and then bring the child to the funeral afterwards. And mom and dad did invite their daughter. They asked her if she wanted to come. She did. They asked her if you know, she had any questions or was scared. She didn't have any questions at that time. So she went to the viewing, and then she came to the service afterwards. This was a 10-year-old who, like a lot of our 10-year-olds and our sangha, I can think of a couple, um, and th who are quite precocious. They are very wise beyond their years. And this young woman, this young girl, age 10, I asked her how it was, and she said, I'm glad I went to say goodbye to my grandpa. I'm glad that I got to come to the funeral service because it was a form of her saying goodbye. It was, I don't want to use the word closure, but it was a way for her to say goodbye and to hold memories of her grandpa close to heart. Um, has anybody seen the movie? I just watched it last night, Inside Out. Anybody seen that movie? It's a Pixar movie. Yeah, I see, <laughs> I see Yamamoto Sasaki's raising their hands. Um, if you haven't watched it, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it reminded me of my Dharma talk today because um, it, it, in this story, this is a story about a little girl named Riley. And within Riley, Riley has all these emotions, right? Joy, joy. And joy wants her to be happy all the time. There's this anger guy. He's red and he just short-tempered. Let's see, there is, uh, remind me, I, I, there's one, this a gal who's kind of, she's sassy. She's sassy, you know. She's she's a little um, uppity. I don't I don't know what the what the right word is, but she stands up for uh, Riley. Uh, and then there's fear. There's this character that's fear, and then there's the character sadness. Sad. Bottom line at the very end, although Joy tries to protect Riley from any kind of sadness, any kind of bad news, any kind of fear. Um, what they all learn, I think, in the end is that there is a place for sadness. And I think that um, for us, our funerals, maybe that's a time for us to grieve. Um, but it's also a time for us to, the importance for us as Jodo Shinshu Buddhists, uh, the importance of funerals and memorials, yes, it is a time to grieve, but it's a time to remember maybe sometimes with a little sadness, but that sadness, when, when I get sad sometimes, I think about the joyful times that I had, and I'm sad because I miss those times. I miss those times. So that was kind of a digression, uh, but I just would recommend those of you uh, parents, maybe you watch that movie. I think it's also, there's messages in there for us also. We don't have to be happy all the time, right? That's all part of who we are. So going back to the message, um, sharing that message with children. Part of listening to the Dharma is two important things that we teach. We teach to our kids in Dharma school, right? Interdependence and impermanence. Those were topics this year in Dharma school. Impermanence means that things are changing. Impermanence means that just like the flowers that bloom year to year, they grow and then they die. We too, human beings, 
we don't live eternally, our lives will end. Stark message, but nevertheless, that is the wisdom that Shakyamuni Buddha shared with us. If we awaken, if we hear the Dharma, if we come to memorial services, hear the Dharma, perhaps one day we'll awaken, truly, truly awaken, because I don't know that I'm there. You know, have I really accepted that my life will end? You know, and I'm in the fall, getting close to winter of my life. Do I think about it? Well, I do more now, but I think the message, as stark as it is, the other side of that message is because there is an end, let's really be grateful for the lives that we have and make the most of our lives. Make the most of our lives. It's tough, and I'm not so sure it is that we're capable of comprehending that, right? We don't want to think about the end. We don't want to think about the end. But I think that if we can grasp that truth, if we can grasp that truth, then we can truly be grateful for the life we have today. And Namo Amida Butsu, that spontaneous Namo Amida Butsu arises within us. That gratitude arises within us. So with that, I hope that those of you that have loved ones um, that have passed away. My mother's one year is coming up next month. And I don't come from a uh, Jodo Shinshu tradition where we did memorial services. Um, I have family members that are Buddhist, and so some of them have um, invited the priest to the home to do a, a service. To be honest with you, I hadn't really thought about it until recently. One of the benefits, um, sorry Luann, but one of the benefits for me personally um, that we've had to fill in because we don't have a resident minister is I have the privilege and honor of conducting, um, I've had the privilege and honor of conducting more memorial services and some funeral services these past few months. And to be honest, those are some of the most memorable times for me. Um, our um, chaplain, Noriko Kawai, you know, she's a hospice chaplain. So Noriko knows what I'm talking about. She deals with this all the time. Uh, we get to do um, makurakyo. We get to do... Um, funeral services, and then we get to do memorial services. We get to remember these people in a very, very meaningful and special way. I have learned more about some of our past members recently and the contributions that they've made to this temple. And it really intensifies my gratitude towards them for all that they have done for this temple. So um, with that, uh, I don't mean to be you know, leaving you with a downer message. My message is grasp this life. You know, hang on to it. Make the most of it. Make the most of your day. Um, embrace your children. Embrace, embrace each other. The heck with COVID. I mean, be careful. You know, don't just throw a caution to the wind. But really embrace. Embrace the day. Be happy as you can be. And um, thank you very much for coming today. Um, it really gives me great pleasure and gratitude to see you here. So please join me in Gashō. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you, Reverend Laverne, for your very meaningful and
heartwarming message on our um, memorials and the gratitude that uh, we have toward all those who have passed on before us and for living our lives with gratitude each day. Will everyone please rise for the singing of the Gatha Ondoksan, uh, which is uh, written by Shinran Shonin, our founder of our Jodo Shinshu tradition, and uh, is, is meaning is about gratitude. Uh, Ondoksan is on page 126 of the service book. And, oh, yes, and Reverend Nodiko has recording to play the, the music. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Nodiko, and thank you for uh, everybody for the singing of the Ondoksan. And uh, now uh, Reverend Laverne will lead us with a closing meditation. Please put your hands together as I read a poem that was written by a former bishop of the BCA. I'm going to sound the bell and please sit in silence, and then I will read um, Reverend Suji's poem. And then we will close with number Tsugashio. Eternal now. In the beginningless, endless flow of time, each life is a mere ripple, existing only for an instantaneous moment and disappearing forever. But each life is a unique experience with beauty and truth all of its own with no identical counterpart in history and none absolutely the same in the future. Your life, my life, is attuned to the rhythm of the cosmos and to the heartbeat of reality. Each life exists in the eternal now. Each idea that is thought, each word that is spoken, each action that is taken, changes the whole pattern of the universe, for the universe is interdependent. Think, speak, and act then, always in the eternal now, with compassion and understanding for your own enlightenment and for the enlightenment of all sentient beings. Please join me in Gashio. Namo Amidabits. 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 Thank you very much, Reverend Laverne, for reading the passage from uh, Reverend Tsuji. Uh, this concludes this morning's uh, service for June. And um, for those of you who would like to stay to listen to uh, Reverend Noriko's Japanese message, you're welcome to do so. For all others, you're welcome to uh, come up for a Gasho offering. And if you uh, would like to join us for hospitality downstairs, you're welcome to do so. Um, thank you very much for attending today. And uh, enjoy your Sunday. Thank you.